this. <laughs> I don't even know if I can read this one. Some of these are a little, uh, should I say X-rated? Probably gonna be demonetized, but YOLO. What is going on, everybody? Do we have a funny one for you today? I've already been dabbling out a few of these messages, but I'll go ahead and tell you exactly what we're doing. So you may remember I did a video where I went over like the funny, stupid mistakes I did as a medical student and resident in this video up here. If you've seen it, you probably laughed at some of the stories I told. If you haven't seen it, you should go watch it because you'll laugh. But I told my funny stories about the things that I did that were dumb when I was a med student in that video. But on this video, the other day I reached out to my followers on Instagram and asked them what their funny stories are or funny things that have happened to them as healthcare workers. So I'm going to go over all of those, review them, rate them, talk about them, and hopefully laugh about them because they're hilarious. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some of these funny stories from my Instagram followers. Thank you for those who sent it in. You shall remain anonymous for your sake. So some of these are a little, uh, should I say X-rated? Maybe we'll have to bleep out a few things, but uh, some of them are pretty funny. Super embarrassing day, but I was a medical assistant working at a clinic and had a rather obese patient come in. He exceeded the weight limit on the scale, which is already an uncomfortable conversation to have as it is. I had him sit down to take his vitals and I used a thigh cuff on his arm to attempt to get any sort of reading. As I struggled to get the cuff on the patient, he told me, I know I'm fat. I passively dismissed the comment, which is what you should do, and proceeded to tell him, please place your feet fat on the floor. I was so damn mortified, my soul was crushed and he definitely noticed. This is one of those like, what, Freudian slip kind of things. You have one thing on your mind and then like, so this patient said, I know I'm fat. So the word fat is on your mind. So instead of saying flat on the floor, she said fat on the floor. And you just want to like crawl under your desk and just sit there because you feel bad. It's another good story. I was a second year nursing student trying to put an IV in for a patient the first time by myself. So I walked into the patient's room, all my supplies, inserted the IV successfully, and midway through the emergency doctor comes in to do an assessment of my patient and watches me complete the IV. The worst thing ever, by the way, when someone's watching you do a procedure, especially as like a med student. At this point, I'm sweating so much alongside the room being insanely hot. So the last step was to secure the IV with tape and my hands were soaked in sweat and I wasn't able to rip the tape despite trying for a solid three minutes while the doctor was watching. So I had to ask the doctor to rip the tape for me. The doctor was super nice about it though. So that's funny because obviously as a med student, you're learning, right? You shouldn't be going in there to do things by yourself. An IV, yeah, that's pretty pretty benign thing to do. A lot of med students do IVs, but this the second like your senior resident or attending comes in and just watches you do it, for some reason you're, like, your heart just pumps and you get anxious, your palms start sweating and you just like make mistakes that you normally wouldn't make if you were just doing it by yourself. But when someone's watching you, you make like all the mistakes in the world and it's just so embarrassing and you feel like so incompetent and like this small, but part of the learning process. All right, so what do you say we uh, keep this train rolling? Let the humor continue. All right, this one is along those same lines. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I mean, it's just natural, right? We're, we're just human beings. So when we talk to patients, sometimes we forget that they're NPO or nothing by mouth. So let me retract here. So NPO is how we say nothing by mouth or nothing to eat after midnight because when a patient is going for surgery the next morning, they cannot have anything to eat for about six to eight hours depending on the hospital policy. And the reason for that is because if a patient has a procedure or surgery, they're going to be getting anesthesia and there's an anesthesia risk for aspiration if the patient has not had proper time in between their last meal. So we say NPO at midnight and the patient is not allowed to have anything by mouth after midnight. So for this person who sent this, asking MPO patients if they're ready for dinner to come. Now, I mean, this is so like, yes, that's terrible to do that because it kind of just like, you know, jabs them a little bit more like, oh, I know you can't eat, but you ready for dinner? Obviously, a lot of people who can't eat for that period of time are not very happy. Like myself, I don't get very happy when I haven't eaten in like three hours. You can imagine if someone hasn't eaten in eight plus hours or if they're waiting for surgery, they're not gonna be too happy and it's funny, but it's not funny, but it is funny. All right, I was waiting for some more urologic stuff in here because those always are the funniest. I worked in urology. The physician put patient decline digital rectal exam in his note. I was like, digital? Since when do they use digital device? No, digital. <laughs> yes, digital rectal exam with your finger, like your digit, not a uh, digital rectal device, electronic. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to the next one. So <laughs> 
This is along the same lines. Again, I feel for the x-ray techs because they're just doing their job. They just put in an order, someone needs an x-ray, patient comes down, they take an x-ray. They don't know the, you know, 40 year history on the patient. So this person, obviously x-ray tech says, one time I asked the patient who only had one leg which foot we were x-raying. <laughs> I mean, look, everybody's done this at some point in their life. Like if you worked in healthcare, the normal assumption when you walk in a patient's room is that they have all four limbs, unless for some reason you tell otherwise. But I've gone into a room as a med student and went to do a physical exam and you pull back the covers and there's no legs. And you're kind of like, whoa, wasn't expecting that. But at the same time, unless you do a deep dive into the chart, you may not know that, especially if it's the first time meeting that patient. So I probably said things like this in the past. Usually the patients actually joke about it with you and give you a hard time for saying it. So it's not that big of a deal, but it is what it is. I was working in a hospital as a radiology tech and I told the patient to put their hands on the x-ray film. I stepped out to set up the technique in the machine and I came back in, the patient was sitting on her hands on the x-ray film. She actually stepped up on the chair, of course. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> Wait, how does that work? I came back in, the patient was sitting on her hands on the x-ray table. I don't understand that. Maybe they were x-raying their hands and they thought they had to sit on it? I'm missing this. So I'm gonna explain that in the comments. It went over my head. All right, so this person says, came in on call as an IR tech, and went into the storeroom to grab a mask or something. The handle inside the storeroom broke off. It's after midnight on a weekend. There's only one nurse in an attending. It took them 25 minutes to find me. This is like my nightmare, because you know how secure the hospital is. A lot of hospitals are, and a lot of them have badge entry rooms. So a lot of my storerooms or like my locker room is badge entry. And there have been times where I go in and I'm like, oh no, I don't, I don't know if I can get out or get back in the way I came because I don't have my badge on me anymore because I take my badge off for a procedure. So I can see how this would work. Obviously the handle broke off on this one, but this is like a fear of mine if you get trapped because on the weekends, there's nobody there. Like nobody, nobody. There's like you, maybe your colleague, that's it. And nobody's roaming the halls and all that stuff. So if you get stuck, you're in there for a while until someone notices. That's my fear. You lived my fear. Oh, this one's bad. <laughs> I once asked a man if he wanted me to turn off the light so he could nap better. He was blind. Mm, that one hurts. I bet whoever said that felt, <laughs> felt that one hurts. Oh, that's so bad. Again, you assume people to have vision unless you know otherwise. So if you don't know otherwise, you'll have a little slip up. And even sometimes when you do know, you still slip up because you're just not used to it. This is a good one because I've come close to doing this myself. I was a newbie tech in the cardiac cath lab and moving the C-arm, I hit the patient's head. The C-arms, for those of you who don't know, they're these huge machines that you basically go in and if there's an OR table or whatever, you put the C into the patient. And these are huge machines and you can't really see what's going on a lot of the times. So you're pushing them in and the x-ray has to be really tight like really like on the patient for whatever you're imaging. And if say, for instance, you were doing a chest x-ray intraoperatively and you had the II close proximity to the chest and then you wanted to go up higher, you can see how it's easy to just run into the patient's head if you don't lift the II first before moving it towards the head. So that's pretty, uh, pretty easy to do. Willing to bet almost every x-ray tech has done something like that. A lot of the stationary ones, which I use in the IR suite, which we use a floral table, if I put the II too close to the patient's head, it'll actually pop back up. So there's like a sensor on it because I've been not paying attention and put the II down and lower, 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 and it's on the patient's nose. But if it has a sensor like a lot of the new ones do, it'll just bounce up and not hurt the patient. Wonder how long it took them to implement that sensor. Good idea whoever thought of that. All right, so we'll end on this one because you know, gotta end somewhere. I was a pre-med hospital volunteer who passed ice and annoyingly asked patients to fill out surveys. Horrible. Anyways, one day I got to see a joint aspiration for a patient with bursitis. In my attempt to show competency, I asked if that was amniotic fluid instead of synovial fluid. <laughs> So synovial fluid is like joint fluid. Amniotic fluid is fluid surrounding the baby in a patient's uterus when they're pregnant, for those of you who don't know. So those are widely different. Although they'll have similar color to them, but they're widely different. I didn't even have time to correct myself before the attendings, MP and male patient were all roasting me. So that that's such a move, like when you're a volunteer or a med student, you really don't know anything. So you're trying to like, you know, exert your knowledge, be like, yeah, I know what's going on. And then you say something incorrect like that and you just get like pounded on for no reason because like you're trying to impress them and it just backfires completely on you. But nonetheless, 
We've all been there. On that note, hopefully you enjoyed these funny stories. If you have any other funny story, leave in the comments below. Maybe I'll do another segment if I have a lot of people reach out to me like they did last time. So make sure you subscribe, share, like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you don't already. And I'll see you all on the, oh, I just hit my camera. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.